Welcome back, everybody. So Ayanda is at the Bryanston Country Club this morning, and they are, I'm not sure about to drill. I think they are drilling for borehole water. Uh, Ayanda, I, your excitement at the fact that it's almost like they've hit oil. It's gushing out the ground. Just talk to me. What's going on there? Leanne, it's just like you see it in the movies. You know when they struck oil and then it just goes right up in the air there? Well, we had that a moment or two ago. And if uh, I'm not mistaken, we're about to see more of it because the display still continues. We're drilling for borehole water right here at the Bryanston Country Club. Leanne, South Africa is the 30th most dry country in the world. We're at number 30. So it's quite a scary thought. And I mean, I was just speaking to my guest about uh, seawater and the oceans and saying, but we've got water all around. Us. How can we be starved for water? And he said that it is so expensive to desalinate water, but borehole water is much cheaper and it's much easier to, 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 to make use of as opposed to turning the sea water and taking the salt out and the whole laborious process there. So we're going to talk to him exactly about how does it work. I'm with Derek Whitfield now. He is from Environmental Drilling and Remediation Services, EDRS. Derek, it's such a pleasure to have you with us today. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. Thanks very much. So the display that we have seen in the morning, and I do believe my guests will see in just a moment as well, what does it entail? What is happening here today? Well, uh, groundwater is an important uh, part of water in South Africa because most people can, get, can have their own water supply. As you see behind us, um, there's a fair amount of water, and that could be right in your backyard. We could drill and find water anywhere between 1,000 and 10,000 liters an hour. Your home only uses between 1,500 and 5,000 liters a day. What sort of opportunities does that bring for a household? Well, it enables you to go off the grid and to irrigate your lush garden, which I believe in a few years' time there probably won't be enough water for the, all these lush gardens in the urban areas. My goodness, how safe is the water though? You get it analysed and you keep analysing it to check that, that the water is safe um, on an annual basis. But 99% of water in Gauteng, including Pretoria, is 100% safe to drink. So the demonstration that we're seeing behind us now, and I got very, very excited about it this morning. It was like striking oil. Is this likely to happen in my backyard if I have uh, some water underneath? Absolutely. It is a messy process and it takes about a day to drill. As you see, there's water coming out. Um, the, we'll get the drilling process underway shortly. It's a noisy process. It's messy. But after the day, we clean up and you come home to a clean yard and you have your own water supply. So it's a, it's a noisy process, a messy process, like you said. Is it an expensive process? It is a relatively expensive process. Um, it can set you back anywhere between 50 and 80,000 Rand to go off the water grid. And that includes a pumping system, a filtration system, and a storage system. Um, we have lined up here all the equipment needed to take the water from the ground into your tap into the house. Mm -hmm. But now, how do I know that I've got some, you know, potential gold underneath there in terms of the water? How do I, how do I say, so is it like a risk that I have to take? Call you guys in to come and check it out and it's either I do or I don't. That's correct. There is a risk involved in that we, no one can tell you for sure if there's water under your property or not. Only the drill can tell you and there's costs involved in that because you have to make the hole. So you don't come through and say if there's no water, no, it's free. Unfortunately <laughs> not. Tell me a little bit about your, your organization, your company, uh, and what you do. Are you finding that more and more South Africans are actually considering borehole water? Absolutely. Um, it, it's becoming a necessity rather than a luxury, particularly if people have got lush gardens, the expensive assets that need to be kept maintained, and people have got concerns about the future water, water supply. So they prefer to be in charge of their own water supply. I'm thinking farms and, and other companies as well should look into this, and not just individual households. Are you finding that the private sector, even government actually, uh, that their office spaces are also looking into this alternative water source? Not as much as we'd like to, uh, it to be used, but we believe offices, office parks, community complexes, they should all be looking at boil water for minimum for irrigating their gardens, to take that pressure off the national grid um, to allow that water to go to, to people who really need it for, for basic use and, and the luxury use, leave it to the ball. I love it. Okay, how do I get a hold of you? Because I'm tempted now. I'm thinking, you know, maybe I've got some borehole water in my garden. How do I get a hold of you? Well, the best way is to look us up on the web. It's domestic www.domesticboreholes. Um, and you can call us on 010 596 1000. You can also contact the Borehole Water Association for contractors, uh, certified contractors across South Africa. Give us that number once again, please. 010-596-1000.
1,000. Love it, absolutely love it. Lastly, talk us through the process now. We found out that there is water underneath the soil here at the Bryanston Country Club. How do you go about checking whether it's uh, efficient and effective, whether it's safe to consume, what, what sort of processes are involved from here on in? Because uh, unfortunately our viewers won't be privy to what happens next. Okay, there's a five-step process. First of all, you've got to drill the hole and, and you've got to decide where you're going to drill the hole in your home. You can see it's a big machine, so most of the time you you're restricted to drilling in the driveway. After that, if you're lucky enough to get water, and let's say 60 to 80% of the time you do get water, you have to test the capacity to see how much water there is. While you're doing that, you take a sample to the laboratory for chemical analysis to prove that it's good for drinking. And then after that comes the installation. That's the sizing of the pump, putting it in, putting it through a filtration system or a holding tank, and then teeing into your main supply coming in from municipality. I love it. But now if you find that there is no water in the driveway, what if it's in my backyard? <laughs> We're not going to know that until oh, we drill. So just keep on drilling until you find something. Well, yeah. Essentially groundwater in, in the Joburg area is found in cracks in the rock. And you're looking for a little crack about this size with a hole about that size. Um, but anything between 40 and 100 meters deep. I think it's worth trying, don't you? Most cases it is, yes. We'll have to leave it there. Thank you so much for that, uh, Derek Woodfield. Just uh, giving us uh, some details of how you and I could possibly find water in our own backyards. Or the driveway, as he said a little bit earlier. I trust you've enjoyed the display right here behind me. Live drilling in action only on Morning Live on SABC. Do stay with us for more in just a moment. Quite a busy show today, so I'm going to hand you back to studio. And there's more in store. Stay with us.